Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, the premier source for Second Amendment news. And like I have done two videos previous, I'm going to continue this series on the American Revolution. This time we're going to look at the Freedom Trail in Boston, Massachusetts. Now this Freedom Trail, if you're not familiar with it, it is a two and a half mile uh, red brick trail, it's a line in the road, uh, that uh, brings you to 16 significant historic sites that had everything to do with the American Revolution. The trail was established in 1951. Uh, it still is there today. You can check it out. It's free to walk the trail. Uh, however, there are numerous buildings that are privately owned that will try to charge you to go in them. Um, but I also will show you a couple other spots that are just off the trail. And I hope that this series brings you to these sites that you might not be able to to experience on your own. Now I'd also like to thank the patrons of this channel, my Patreon supporters, you guys and gals make these types of trips happen. Uh, so thank you very much. So without further ado, let's check out the Freedom Trail in Boston, Massachusetts. Well, hopefully that montage got everybody pumped up and the first spot I'm going to bring you to is actually not on the Freedom Trail itself. And that is the actual location that the Liberty Tree once stood. Um, like many of Boston's other revolutionary landmarks like the Old North Church and Faneuil Hall that still stand today, Liberty Tree is gone. Uh, and that's because the British Army chopped down the tree in 1775. But the Liberty Tree symbolized the violent mob uprising, the tarring and feathering side of the American Revolution, you know, the good old days. <laughs> and uh, this is where it once stood. So the next spot we're going to start at is the Boston Common. Now, Boston Common is America's oldest public park. Uh, it began as a common grazing ground for sheep and cattle of the colonists. It's 44 acres of land and sits right smack dab in the middle of Boston. And uh, there are a few uh, monuments on the common that I wanted to show you because uh, they're very interesting and they also lend towards the topic of the video. So let's check out the Boston Massacre Monument. This is in Boston Common and this was dedicated on November 14th, 1889. Now this monument, there's a lot going on here. Uh, when we showed up on this particular day, it was undergoing restoration. So I'll insert some other pictures here so that you can uh, get a better idea of what I'm referring to. Now the monument consists of the female you see, and she represents the spirit of the revolution, and she's standing atop of a granite base, and she's standing in front of the tall uh, granite obelisk in the back, and on the top of the obelisk is uh, the 13 stars around the top. In her left hand, she is holding a furled American flag. Her right arm is raised, and uh, she's holding a broken piece of chain to symbolize we're breaking free from the chains of the, uh, the British monarchy. Uh, beneath her right foot is a broken British crown, and to her left is an eagle ready to take flight. There's a lot going on there. It symbolizes everything that was happening uh, during the revolution. And just below her is a bronze relief plaque depicting the Boston Massacre. It shows five men, uh, Crispus Attucks, Samuel Maverick, James Caldwell, Samuel Gray, and Patrick Carr, uh, those folks were slain by the British soldiers in front of the Massachusetts State House, and keep those names in mind because you will see them again. The next spot I want everybody to see on the Boston Common is the Declaration of Independence tablet. Uh, this uh, is a bronze copy of the famous uh, painting of John Trumbull uh, that he did in 1818, and this is set into a granite block, as you can see, with an eagle carved out at the top, and uh, it's just something cool to see when you're walking Boston Common that, boom, there is the famous painting as well as the text of the Declaration of Independence. Too bad everybody walking around the city, especially those in politics, can't read the damn tablet. There's one other thing I wanted to show everybody here in Boston Common, and you have to walk all, all the way to the other side of the common. Uh, you have to cross the Public Garden footbridge. It's a beautiful area. There's a lot of flowers on this side of the common. It's a very, very picturesque area. But uh, for this video, the most important part of it is this. This is the equestrian statue of George Washington. 
This bad boy is 22 feet by 6 by 15 feet. And while the statue is absolutely stunning, uh, over the years, the statue's sword has repeatedly been broken off and stolen. So to avoid continually having to recast the bronze replacements, the sword you see now is a fiberglass substitute. All right, so now we're going to officially start the uh, Freedom Trail. This building here, this is the Boston Common Visitor Information Center. If you're interested in the location, it's 139 Tremont Street. This is where the official tours start. If you want to take a tour, I have been here numerous times with field trips and stuff, and I've never taken an official tour. It's 15 bucks. I said, what the heck, why not? And I got to hang around with this bloke for the, uh, the 90 minutes of the tour. As you can see in the pictures, the actual red brick trail, it's two and a half miles long. It starts right here in this building. Now, back in the day when the Puritan colonists uh, purchased the land rights to the common, uh, they used to hold their pu uh, puritanical punishments here. Uh, this was the home of whipping posts, pillories, and stocks. Uh, they used to be what was known as the Great Elm. It is now gone, uh, but that's where pirates, murderers, and witches were hanged from the Great Elm tree. And uh, this uh, grassy area here that you see is where uh, those folks were buried. This is also the location of the uh, training field where over 1,000 British Redcoats made camp on the Boston Common during the British occupation of Boston in 1775. It is from this location that three brigades of Redcoats embarked to make their fateful trip to Lexington and Concord, which I have covered in my other videos, which I will have linked above. As you follow the Red Brick Freedom Trail, it leads you next to the Massachusetts State House. Now, the State House is the first public construction project after uh, Massachusetts became a state, uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And as you can see here from this old sketch uh, to the left of the state house used to be the Hancock mansion. Now I've covered the Hancock Clark house in Lexington uh, in, in the video I did in Lexington and Concord. If you for more information, you can see that house uh, in that video. And that's where uh, young John Hancock lived with his grandfather after his father had passed. And then six years later, he moved into this house. You can see in this sketch, the Hancock Manor. Now, this mansion was knocked down when they expanded the state house, uh, which was a travesty, but a, uh, an exact replica of the Hancock Manor is now located in Ticonderoga, New York. And if you're wondering, the gold dome uh, is actual 18 karat gold. Well, guys and gals, as you can see, there's a whole lot of history on the Freedom Trail, and it's kind of tough to condense it while still getting the importance of these locations out. So this will be the end of part one, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, look forward to part two, which will be coming very shortly. If you want to watch that one, hit that subscribe button down below, hit that bell icon, and uh, like the video. And uh, stay tuned for part two of the American Revolution, the Freedom Trail in Boston. As always, guys and gals, be safe, stay vigilant, and carry a weapon. I'll see you on part two.